The difference between a defensive trademark and a regular trademark may be a little confusing to some. This video will explain exactly what a defensive mark is and clarify the differences between a defensive trademark and a regular trademark. Although you can trademark almost anything, registering a regular trademark does not give you an unlimited right to prevent others from using a mark similar or even identical to yours. A trademark owner only is able to receive protection in respect to the goods and services specified in their application. The purpose of a defensive trademark is to provide enhanced protection for a trademark which has been used to such an extent for particular goods or services that if another party were to use the mark for even quite different goods or services, the public could be misled. The Trademarks Act which was established in 1995 is the legislation which governs intellectual property in Australia. Subject to Section 185 of the Act, before obtaining a defensive trademark, it must be established that the relevant trademark is already registered in the owner's name, and the registered trademark has been used to such an extent that its use in relation to unconnected goods and services would indicate to consumers that there is a connection. For an effective registration to occur, it must be shown that consumers would be confused and suspect a link to your trading activities if Intellectual Property Australia registered other similar marks to unrelated goods and services. In determining whether this connection exists, the following are relevant considerations. The nature of the trademark, the existence of identical or similar trademarks registered after the original application but before the defensive trademark application, the reputation of the mark, the classes of goods and services claimed under the defensive trademark application, and whether they are similar to the goods and services claimed under the original application, and the evidence filed in support. If you are a little confused at the moment, it's only normal. Let's run through a few examples to help clarify everything that's previously been said within the probation. Let's take probably the world's most prominent sporting brand, Nike. Nike is a registered trademark. It is very well known across Australia, and it is likely that if someone was to use the trademark on other goods or services, like this coffee cup, then a consumer would make a connection back to Nike's trademark. When registering a defensive trademark, you must select which classes of goods and services you want to register under. As you can see represented on the table, Nike has a defensive registration under just beers and non-alcoholic beverages, whereas Aldi registered under 45 different classes in total. This may seem like a lot, however, as the owner is not subject to the use provisions of the Act, they may register a defensive trademark even when they do not intend to use the trademark over those particular goods or services. I hope the above examples have clarified any lingering doubts you had over defensive trademarks. To conclude, let's go over the key points which this video has touched upon. Firstly, the owner of a standard trademark registration may register the same trademark for goods and services for which it has no intention to use its mark as a defensive registration. Secondly, unlike regular trademarks, defensive registrations cannot be removed for non-use and can only be cancelled if the primary registration is cancelled. Defensive registrations block acceptance of subsequently filed third-party applications to register the same or similar mark for the same or similar goods or services. And lastly, defensive registrations are a cost-effective and efficient mechanism to enforce well-known marks. Thank you for listening to the presentation.